Hi friends, my name is Natras. In this video, I am going to talk various basics related to web application development and I am going to prepare background that is required to understand Spring MVC application flow. So, before understanding what is Spring, what is Spring MVC, all this stuff, so let us try to understand fundamentals of what MVC architecture. Let me prepare background to understand what Spring MVC flow. In that process, first I want to give more clarity about MVC architecture, then we will go for what Spring MVC. So, let us try to understand things from scratch level. Before understanding what is MVC architecture, let us try to observe what are the different logics that will be there in web application development. If you take any Java web application development, typically these many logics will be there. What are those logics? Request data gathering logic, what logics here? Request data gathering logic, form validation logic, business logic, persistence logic, presentation logic, session management or tracking logic, middleware services and many other logics are will be there, but these are the main logic that web application maintains. Let us try to understand one by one, let us try to understand one by one. What is this? First we are trying to understand what is request data gathering logic. Whenever we give request to web application along with the request so much data comes not only form data, nothing but request parameter, you will get some miscellaneous information, you will get header values like uh, user agent header holding browser name, accept header holding MIME types that are supported by browser, lot of miscellaneous information, content type, content length, okay, content type, content length, methodology, get up, post, uh, lot of information. So, whatever logic we write, Okay, to read that data in our web application is called what? Request data gathering logic. For this purpose, we use lot of get triple x method, get triple x method on the request object. For example, to read form data, request dot get parameter, to read header values, request dot get header. And we have lot of get triple x method to read the miscellaneous info, get method, gives request methodology, get or post get content type, okay. So, like this we have lot of get triple x method, get protocol, get scheme. So, lot of methods are there. So, whatever logic we write using those method is called as what? Request data gathering logic. So, next we have to think about form validation logic. What logic here? Form validation logic. It is all about verifying pattern and format of the form data. What do you mean by pattern? Date value is there in certain pattern or not? DD, MM, YY, MM, DD, YY. Format, uh, required fields are typed or not? Is is given as a numeric value or not? Password and retype passwords are matching or not? Email ID is having at the rate comma dot symbols or not? It comes under what? Form validation logic. Sometimes we do at client side using JavaScript, sometimes we do at server side using Java code, but ultimately after reading form data we try to validate it. Next, business logic, we are developing web application means there will be a purpose. You take flipkart.com, their main purpose is selling the products. Whatever logic they write for selling the product by attracting the customer is called main logic of the application and this main logic is called as what? Business logic or what? Service logic. Suppose you have a web application which takes two numbers and performs addition of two numbers. So, whatever logic that is there C is equal to A plus B is called as what? Business logic. So, you are developing application means there will be main requirement for that application. The logic that fulfills that main requirement is called as what? Business logic. Next, we are having persistence logic. It is the logic 
that interacts with the database software and manipulates database data. Not only database software, it talks to some persistence store. And nothing but JDBC code, Hibernet code, this kind of code is called as what? Persistence logic. Mainly it is there to perform code operations here. C for create nothing but insert operation, U for update nothing but modification operation, R for read nothing but what? Select operation, D for delete nothing but what? Delete operation. So, that is called persistence logic. Next, presentation logic. This is the logic that prepares user interface for end user to supply inputs to application or to display outputs of the application is called as what? Presentation logic. Nothing but the HTML code we write in what? PW.println statement. The HTML code we write in what? JSP. The logics we write in what? JSP comes under what? Presentation logic. Uh, what it? It prepares user interface for end user using which end user supplies the inputs to the application. Nothing but web application. Using same interface, output will be displayed for the end user. In this process, it collects the various results, various data, formats it and presents it in, presents to end user in a beautiful format. That logic is called presentation logic. Mainly, the HTML code and JSP code just represents what? Presentation logic. Next, I am talking about what? Session management logic. Yeah, it is the logic that remembers client data across the multiple requests during a session. Mm, it is something like this here. Session means set of continuous and related operation performed on the web application by a browser is called what? Session. Sign in to sign out is called one session. You take a gmail.com, we log in and we say log out. So, login to logout is called one session. Across the multiple requests that are given to web application during a session, that means login to logout. If web application is remembering client data across the multiple requests, then that web application is called what? Stateful web application. And web application becomes stateful application because of what? Session management techniques. What techniques here? Session management techniques. By default, every web application is stateless. That means, it does not remember client data across the multiple requests. That means, while processing request 2, we cannot use request 1 data. While processing request 3, we cannot use what? Request 1 and request 2 data. By default, every web application is what? Stateless. But if we add one or other session tracking technique, stateless web application becomes stateful and it remembers client data across the multiple requests during a session. During a session. That means, while processing current request, we can use previous request data. While processing request 3, we can use request 2 data. While processing request 4, we can use what? Request 1, request 2, request 3 data. Such applications are called what? Stateful applications. For example, you take gmail.com here. By default, every web application is stateless, but gmail.com looks like what? Stateful. It is not because of what? Gmail is special. No. In the gmail.com development, they have added session management techniques, one or other session tracking techniques. Because of that, it has become what? Stateful application. How can you say it is a stateful application? After launching login page, we submit username and password. And it remembers that username, okay, password until you say sign out. In between sign in to sign out, you give n number of requests. It remembers and uses that what? Username and what? Password. For example, we signed in, we got an inbox space. Actually, to open each email message, we have to submit username password, but it won't ask it because it uh, remembers already given username and password and uses it internally to launch email messages. To forward that email message also username password is required. Again, it will not ask. It will use internally. Till what time it will remember here? Until you say sign out. Suppose if web application is not stateful, what is the problem? Very simple. 
while login you have to submit username password while opening each email message you have to submit username password while deleting mail you have to use pass username password while composing and sending mail you have to pass username password while forwarding mail you have to use pass username password because application forgets whatever you have given during login that does not remember for other request so that's why you will get frustration to enter username password for every activity that's why stateful behavior is required but the, by default web application is what stateless to make it stateful we have to use one or other session management technique okay spring uh, so in our java we have there is a support for four techniques for what session management cookies here HTTP session with cookies here, URL rewriting is there, hidden form fields, maybe we have not written here, hidden form fields also can be treated as what, session tracking technique, but if it is not officially considered as what, session tracking technique, but we can also feel it is also one what, session tracking technique. So ultimately, because of this logic, the stateless web application becomes stateful. That means, web application remembers browser data or user data across the multiple requests during a session. That means, while processing any current request, we can use previous request data. By default, it is not possible because of session management logic we write, this becomes possible. Next. We are having what middleware services, what services, middleware services. These are additional services that are applied on the application to make our application more perfect and accurate. For example, security, logging, all these are middleware services. Without security also website runs here, but when security is added, our application becomes what? Okay, more perfect. It does not allow unauthenticated user to use the services. Logging, keep track of application flow. Without logging also application runs, it takes request, it delivers response. But of logging, we can monitor which activity happened at what time. If any problem comes at that time, we can see the state of the application execution. So, these are not minimum logics of application development, these are what additional logics of application development. So, that is why primary logics are called business logic, secondary logic which are optional logic, sometimes we want to enable, sometimes we want to disable. If they, they are not there also no problem, such logics are called as what? secondary logics also called as middleware services also called as what middleware services so these are not minimum logics of the application development i will give an best example bank application is there here withdraw logic is primary logic uh, deposit logic is primary logic transfer money logic is primary logic but security logging Okay, next auditing, even though these are not there, bank operation will happen smoothly. But when they are added as a secondary logics, okay, our application, bank application becomes more perfect and what? Accurate. So, such logics are called secondary logics. Another term for secondary logics is what? Middleware services. Middleware services are the additional, optional, services or secondary logics that can be enabled or disabled on our application to make our application more perfect and what accurate. Even though they are not there, no problem. When they are there, our application becomes what more perfect and what accurate. So, if you take any web application, typically these many logics will be there. So, then why, 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 we, why should we learn all these things, sir? Because there are different models of developing Java web application. There are different models of developing Java web application. Any model, these logics will be there, but it all about how we separate those logics. So, we have model 1 architecture, model 2 architecture. Model 1 architecture, model 2 architecture. This model 2 architecture is also called as what? MVC. 
model to architecture is also called as what MVC. model view controller architecture. Actually in this model to architecture again we are having MVC1 and MVC2 architectures. What architectures here? MVC1 and MVC2. MVC1 and MVC2 architecture. So, again I am saying calling model 1 as MVC 1, model 2 as MVC 2 is a wrong thought. Model 1 is different, model 2 is different. Within the model 2, we have MVC 1 and what? MVC 2. I will I, I, give brief idea about model 1 and model 2. In model 1, no layers will be there. All the logics will be written in a single component. Whatever logics I have explained, all the logics will be mixed up and will be written in a single component. When it comes to model to architecture, layers will be there. Model, view, controller like this multiple layers will be there. Every layer will deal with the specific logic and these layers will be developed by using what specific technologies. That means here whatever logics we have discussed above they will be placed in multiple layers with the support of multiple technologies. Here no layers will be there, all the logics will be mixed up in a single component. So that is the basic difference between what model 1 and model 2. Model 1 and what model 2. Model 1 is good for small scale website and model 2 in, in fact MVC1, MVC2 we can prefer using for what medium scale and what large scale projects. We can prefer using that it for what medium scale and what large scale projects. Okay? So I am winding up this video with this because in the next video I am going to talk much about what, what is model 1 architecture what is MVC1 and what MVC2 architecture. As I said, before launching Spring MVC application flow, what is need of Spring MVC? I would like to prepare background related to understanding what MVC architecture. So that is what we are doing over here. Okay. Thank you. Um, have a nice time and happy coding. Mm -hmm.